Hi, welcome to this time of worship. I'm Pastor Phil Hunter. Welcome to my apartment cl clubhouse. Have it all to ourselves for the moment. We'll see if anyone joins us for, for this time around God's word. I'm glad you're here. This is a, a beautiful service for uh, when disaster strikes in deep water. Doesn't sound like a comfortable place to be, <clears throat> but we've all, all been there. Um, we're gonna learn from uh, an account in the a historical book of the Bible, Acts, uh, about how God bailed his people out and gave them strength and even hope when the situation seemed helpless. Let's uh, begin remembering that there's only one true God, the name of the God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are some hymns in the worship guide below this video in the description. So if you go there, you can click first the worship guide, and then you can click along to listen with various hymns. Also, the, uh, the account of Acts 27 is long. It's uh, many, many, many verses to, to read. So I've got it as a video link that you can watch there. It's about five minutes that you could watch Acts 27, get the whole, the whole uh, lay of the land of what happened there from the time they set out from the, the first harbor to the time the boat, well, I can't give away the ending yet, can I? But you can, you can uh, take five minutes to watch that uh, before the sermon. Um, but certainly the hymns will have live music in person at Pinecrest this weekend. So if you're at all able to, to join us, that's a good place to be. Um, when you're in town, when you're feeling healthy, when you can make it, uh, please do. It's, there's nothing better than worshiping together with other Christians. But for the time being, I'll continue doing this uh, because this is, this is assisting a lot of people who are worshiping from home. Let's take a moment to repent of our sins. Merciful God, I confess to you before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, in what I have done and in what I have left undone. Forgive my sins, heal me by your spirit, and raise me to new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God give you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of your sins. For Jesus' sake, amen. Let's turn to John chapter 6, uh, some of the ending verses of that chapter. Jesus talks a lot about bread and in a description of himself in this chapter. Uh, just like you need bread or something like bread to keep your energy up and, and stay alive, you need Jesus. And by eating of him, that is believing in him, you have eternal life. John 6. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And then the Jews began to argue very sharply among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. That's from the book of Exodus. But whoever feeds on this bread himself will live forever. That's the word of our Savior. Talking about himself in a kind of a mysterious way, but um, let's, let's do exactly that. Let's learn from him, feast on, on him, receive from him the, the life and the sustenance that we need. Acts 27. Uh, go ahead, you can pause me. You can, you can watch this, this section of Acts uh, or read it out of your Bible. It's, uh, it's got some technical nautical terms in it. So as a sailor, I get a kick out of, out of Luke recording such detail about this, this chapter. But um, take a moment to, to read through it and follow along with that journey. I, I know you're going to be tempted to just keep reading, find out what happens after chapter 27. That's, that's fine. You can keep reading on there. And when you're ready, come back and, and unpause and, and uh, let's dive into this section together. Let's pray. 
Dear Jesus, thank you for this time around your word. Your word is truth. Strengthen our faith in you as we hear the message of you and your love. Amen. So hopefully you've read or listened to or watched chapter 27 of Acts, and by now you know that dumb sailing put 276 lives into a really bad spot. They had a couple things going for them, though. One man on board seemed to have all the answers, but no authority. And another man had all the authority, but no answers. Usually, you probably feel like the other 274 people on board who didn't have either authority or the answers. Instead, you're trapped between three options. Fend for yourself, blindly follow someone with power, or trust a man who says an angel brought him a message from God. <laughs> Which of those is your best option? It's hard to know how you tend to react, what you, how you're, you're wired or how your personality reacts to disaster until you face disasters a few times. Uh, disasters strike, don't they? Out of nowhere, disaster strikes, unannounced. Things are great, and the next moment they're awful, and you're all in over your head, all of a sudden. Sometimes that's how disasters do work. You know, the car blindsides you. Uh, a call out of absolutely nowhere, no warning, shocking bad news. Uh, some instant tragedy that all of a sudden you were totally not expecting. You couldn't see it. Nobody from the outside could have seen or expected this. That happens. But maybe not as often as you'd think. A lot of times, disaster doesn't so much as strike. It more kind of has a long lead up. And like that proverbial frog in the water, things have actually been heating up around us for a long time. You only realize it's a disaster and it feels like it strikes when you suddenly realize, oh, I'm getting totally cooked here and I can't handle this. The sailors ignored so many warning signs. There were bad winds off of Cyprus. There were bad winds off of Smetus. There were bad winds off of Crete. And then they had the chance to, to take a safe winter harbor. Uh, on a Mediterranean island at a place called Fair Havens. Why would you not do that? No, they had deadlines. They had to get back to Rome. And, and so disaster strikes. Kind of. They should have seen this coming. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, not really. We fall prey to random disasters probably less often than you'd think. More often, we're prey to disasters of, of our own fault or, or of a combination of, of faults that have been piling up and accumulating until finally we say we can't, can't take it anymore. Um, you know, you might, might be falling prey to your own laziness, and eventually it catches up to you. Your own little white lies that catch up to you, and then dis that's a disaster. Your own careless spending, or your own failure to address a pet sin quickly, early, you know, we ignore the abundant warning signs like those sailors, and then you know, disaster strikes. When you realize the error of your ways, you probably have, again, a personality type that leads you to do one of a few things. Maybe you, like those handful of sailors on that ship, you run to the lifeboats. Your tendency is cut free, cut loose from the people dragging you down, and you think you're better off if you don't risk it on your own. If you don't risk it with them, you're better off risking it on your own. Maybe that's how you, you uh, operate. You know, that's your tendency to just kind of cut loose, detach. It's kind of sleazy, bailing on all the other people in their, in their moment of need. They were the sailors. They were there to help, but they were going to flee. Uh, that's uncaring. It's kind of selfish. But it's a flight reflex that comes instinctively to a lot of us. When the, the people in your life are annoying or undependable, you just wish for independence from everyone, even though that's never really possible. Others were bound by their duty to keep doing their jobs as well as they could to the very end. And maybe that's more like you. Those soldiers, they started making instant executive decisions, so to speak, that, that weren't theirs to make. They, they wanted to kill the, the, the prisoners. They thought, well, at least this is something I can do, something I can control when everything else 
the direction of the boat, their own future was out of their control. Do you spring into action and try to overcome disaster, working the phones, making yourself as busy as possible, distracting yourself and thinking and talking a mile a minute to try to overwhelm the disaster with your own efforts? Has that ever worked for you? Does it eventually hit you like a ton of bricks when you meet a disaster that you can't fix yourself and instead you're, you're helpless? And does that make you feel hopeless. Well, then you'd be right in good company with a bunch more of us, including the two Christians on board, probably most of the people on that ship, who reported in verse 20, we gave up all hope of being saved. Now, Saints Paul and Luke didn't give up hope of being saved by Jesus and taken to heaven. Uh, they, they didn't give up hope of their Christian faith or their salvation by Jesus. They just read the signs of this storm and the condition of the boat, and they just figured along with everyone else on board, this is it. We gave up hope of the Coast Guard coming and rescuing us off of this boat. Better just face that this is going to be the final disaster you'll face in this life. Get your mind around it. Get ready. Of course, it wasn't the end for them. They felt like it was. They gave up hope that the boat could be rescued, but it wasn't the end. They couldn't see the future and, and know that until God let one of them see the future and hear that it was, it was not going to be their end. They had spent two weeks not eating, feeling totally helpless and hopeless. I think you might act the same if you're trying to cope with some disaster. They probably, some of them, tried to barter with their gods. Uh, if you get me out of this, I'll do this for you. Uh, they tried to appoint blame for their bad luck and try to rack their mind of what did I do to get myself so in this situation and uh, that this is, this is the disaster I face. But even if the Christians and the pagans together all gave up hope of a Coast Guard rescue, the Christians had a different attitude toward this disaster. And they had an extra kind of hope, still being saved, sitting in their wet back pocket. See, Christians like Paul and Luke and like you and me, we don't dread stormy seas. We expect them. Our life is not just about this life. We know that we're on a voyage and that we've only seen a tiny little leg of the journey, one that Jesus warned us is going to be chock full of disasters that make you fear and doubt. And sometimes you'll be downright helpless. Sometimes the boat will sink. But you will never be hopeless. We spend as many days as we have here appreciating God's grace, testifying about his mercy, and then we join him face to face in a beautiful eternity. Even when you know you're helpless here, even when you're forced to give up hoping for something you wanted, you're never hopeless. Jesus is your hope. If anyone had reason to feel hopeless or to live in fear, it was Jesus. He faced danger, took more than his body could bear, knew the impossible cup that his father had planned for him to drink. And Jesus lived his whole life with the, the shape of that cross up ahead of him. And he accepted it as a painful disaster that he was going to have to undergo. And he did undergo it. He made himself totally helpless, wouldn't lift a finger to help himself, wouldn't call an angel to help him out, couldn't even get an approving nod from his father when he needed it most. He gave up his spirit. He sank down into a tomb. But he was not hopeless. His death was just a quick pause in eternity, and yet it gave a hope to you and to me and to a world in need of holy, precious blood shed as a sacrifice on our behalf. When the hours drag on for you and the days feel like weeks, you are not hopeless. Jesus gives you hope of joy for eternity. When the people around you disappoint you and nothing seems to go right, you are not hopeless. You have hope that you are accepted by God as beautiful and faithful and perfect in his sight as Jesus tidies up your messes and rights your wrongs. You have hope, which gives you a weird kind of courage. 
you're undefeatable and unsinkable with not just words of God, but also his blood and his scars and his whole precious life given as the ransom to save the helpless and the hopeless. Anyone can sail a ship when the sea is calm, but the next time there's a disaster in the deep water, whom do you listen to? The little voice in your head, the loudest voice in the room, or the words of a prisoner encouraging you to eat, take some food, have some courage, and even be happy that God will keep his word to you. The boat might still sink, but God will always be by your side to get you through this storm, off this boat, into somewhere better, no matter what. Keep courage then, for I have faith in God that it will happen. Amen. God's peace is beyond our understanding, but may it guard and keep your hearts and your minds trusting in Jesus our Savior. Often we have the Lord's Supper right after uh, our sermon in the uh, in-person service. If you'd like me to visit you with uh, the Lord's Supper, I'd love to do that. If you're not a member, you're watching this and you're kind of getting a sense for our congregation, I'd love to meet with you too and get you set up with our membership course, uh, Fresh Start, so that you too can have communion together with us. It's a, a privilege of being a, a member in our congregation. Uh, and. Uh, also, offerings are a way that we show our gratitude to God. We trust in what he's given us and we support our congregation and the, the work we're doing here in Wesley Chapel and around the world. Uh, so you can give your offering online. There's a link in the description below the video. Uh, give it as an act of, act of worship. You can never outgive God. What we do is a little thank you card, a little response, sacrificing a little tiny something back to him who has sacrificed everything back to us. If you're a guest watching this, just, just a note that this is something that we do. We don't expect our guests to contribute anything. This is for, for members, one of the responsibilities and, and even a privilege of membership to support our work in this way. Let's take a moment to, to express to the Lord and to one another in clear words what we believe. We're going to use the first chunk of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, it's about our Creator and the things that He does to keep us alive. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God created me and all that exists, and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all I need to keep my body and life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger, guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, please deliver those in harm's way. Uh, watch over those who work in healthcare and our patients in hospitals in our area. Uh, we thank you for gifts uh, of, of treasures and talents and time and, uh, and even things that just bring a smile to our face. We praise you for the greatest blessings of all and for the deliverance that you promise us, uh, whether from disasters that threaten us uh, temporarily or from the biggest threats of all. We bring you our private prayers in these moments of silence. Give us the kind of peace that no one else can give to us. As we pray to you the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We have a membership course that we're, we're going through in person on Sundays. The members of the group who are already members are going through it to kind of see, oh, what is, what is our path to membership like? And to ask questions that uh, they have uh, about whatever topic we happen to be studying that day. Uh, in the worship guide, I've got kind of an outline of what's coming up over the next month. Let's close with the Lord's blessing. And again, you can sing any of the, the songs. Follow the links in the description below the video. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Great to worship with you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.